start with some definitions. Engineering education. Engineering education is the activity of teaching knowledge and principles related to the professional practice of engineering. It includes the initial education for becoming, it's not very interesting, is it? Most education nowadays tends to be just rote memorization. Instead of actually learning and understanding the subject at hand, people just go in, learn what something means. You might know some teachers who do this. You might, maybe not, but I'm betting you probably do. Education is an interesting field. And to some extent, everybody is interested in education. You vested plenty of time into it. By the time you're done, most likely, especially in this group, you'll have at least 20 years that you, that you spend time with it. Any person who you talk to will probably be able to tell you a lot about their education, their teachers, what they like, what they dislike. Though perhaps less people are interested in talking to educators. Now, of course, there are plenty of problems with that in education. For example, when you're trying to predict education, kids who are entering kindergarten this year will only be done in 2065. We can't even judge what will be happening in five years, much less that far in the future. So how can we develop a system where everybody can learn what they'll need to learn? Kids themselves have tremendous talent. Kindergartners, elementary schoolers are some of the most creative people. There was a study done about how divergent people are in their thinking, and that, like for example, one, one idea of what the questions would be like is, how many uses can you think of for a paper clip? Most people can think of maybe 15, 20, but if you start to stretch the limits of what you can consider a paper clip, can it be 100 feet tall and made out of foam instead of metal, then you can come with more, like maybe 200. Kindergarteners, you're, well first off, how the study works is that if you if you scored in the top 5%, you're considered a genius. 98% of kindergartners, when they took the test, were considered geniuses. Five years later, they tested the same students. Only 50% were considered geniuses. Five years after that, only 5%. Usually, you consider education the other way around. You start very poor off, you learn stuff, you get better, and then you're better off in the end. But in this case, it's education that is causing lack of creativity in some cases. Here is a map of ADHD across America. It seems to be more prevalent the further west east you go. So when you reach Oklahoma, you start to lose interest. Get further to like Alabama, you're having trouble thinking. Once you get to Washington, you can't think of anything at all. <laughs> Education leads to the fact that we're living in the most interesting time that there ever has been in history. There are so many stimulating things to, to a young child or any, any age of mine. You say have phones, internet, everything that you have now. And people and teachers are angry that students can't pay attention to the sometimes boring topics that are at hand. It makes sense why they are, though. So instead of trying to figure out a solution, sometimes medication is the solution. Which is not always the best, best way to go about it. What are the other problems? First off, like I mentioned earlier, most of teaching is simply just rote memorization. Richard Feynman is a physicist who was known for his work at Los Alamos where they fit the nuclear bomb, a few other things, Feynman diagrams, interaction between particles, just various things in physics. One thing he did though at one point is he took a trip to Brazil to analyze how the education was going there. In this trip, he discovered something. At first he was having a fair, he was very interested. All the students were learning physics. Even kindergartners were learning about physics. But when he asked the students questions, when he asked the first one question, they answered it entirely correctly. He asked another question that he thought was exactly the same. None of them got it correct. And the problem was that they weren't understanding the topics at hand. If he asked something about how light bends as it travels through a substance like glass, he asked them about what is the degree by which the light changes, and that's like Brewster's angle or whatever, and they could tell him that. But when he took a Polaroid, put it under a sheet of glass, and asked, by how much will this move? They had no idea. They had no understanding of the concept. They only knew the words, how things fit together. And it was a self-perpetuating cycle. The professors learned the definitions. So they taught the definitions to the students, who then became professors. Because Brazil had no real physics program at the time, because they were somewhat behind, because of the self-perpetuating cycle. So Feynman was invited to talk at a dinner party. He, being the extremely polite man that he is, took the, fit, took the textbook that they all revered and loved as their primary example of learning. He took that textbook and he told them 
how everything was run. The textbook was laid out very nicely. There was bolded headers with the most important topics, italicized definitions, everything you'd like in a textbook. But it was terrible for the same fact that it didn't help anybody understand. There weren't any experimental studies in the textbook. There wasn't anything to help them learn what they were actually supposed to be learning. So, he told them what was wrong. And surprisingly, they agreed. Admittedly, the politicians of America were like, why did he send this finding out? He had no idea what he was talking about. So there are some ways that education can be improved. Sometimes, it's more trouble of what is being taught, rather than how to teach it. How to teach might be one problem that still some people are facing. But, it's not always, you know some very good teachers, but that doesn't mean you have the best education. Here's another example. Stephen Alton, he is a professor at the University of South Florida, and he teaches about microchips. However, one of the teachers of his, of his four-year-old asked if he could make a presentation to said four-year-old. He decided to do something fairly complex, teaching the four-year-old how to make microchips. His first slide was of a potato chip, and he said, this is not a microchip. But the four-year-olds learned. Later on, apparently, they went on a field trip to a telephone switching plant. So when they were, set, when they were going there, a rack was pulled out and, told, and the person who was giving the tour said, these are the magical brains of the process, of what makes everything work. And one of the four-year-olds said, that's not magical brains, that's microchips. And they learned. They weren't just seeing, this is this, we can learn from memorization. They weren't usually given a top-down teaching method. So that's what he did. He told them the general idea and went down more deep into the principles. How do we fix this issue? Well, there are some small steps you can make, but overall it's a larger issue than just being able to make small steps. Certain things like, say, teaching statistics before calculus. Most of algebra now is just a pyramid that leads up to calculus at the very top. But most people don't use calculus. Unless, if you're a mathematician, scientist, economist, anything like that, you need calculus, at least by your freshman year of college, if not earlier. But for everybody else, you should probably take statistics. Statistics tells you about probability, how everything will work, but very few people know about this. If everybody knew about statistics, you'd probably be much better off as a country. And admittedly, you might get less money from the lottery than that sort of thing going towards education, but it probably would help in the long run. There are other things like this that would also help. Instead of having just textbooks dry with definitions, things like that, having programs like, say, this, honors mentorship, anything like that, where you can have students learn and understand is a much better system of going about it. And while you might not necessarily learn exactly what you're going to do, as most likely not all of you, in fact, maybe very few of you, will end up doing what you want to do now, it helps you learn the skills that you'll need. For example, if you're an engineer, you'll need to know AutoCAD or some other form of computer aided design software. But, show of hands, how many people know how to, in depth, use a computer aided design software? Very well. No one? Precisely. Nobody, or, okay, or an equivalent thing in another field. Anyone? There is no, very few programs set up that allow students to learn what they really need for their careers. There are programs like this where you can learn like skills like competition, collaboration, things like that. But most of education is all in this last bullet point, this intellectual property. Learning about knowledge and things like that. That's pretty much all of what your 20 years will be spent doing. You won't learn anything, anything about innovation, problem solving skills, economics, business development, economies, ethics, research and development. More likely than not, you're not going to learn anything about that until you actually get into a career. Most people finding jobs straight from college have difficulty because when they come to a job place, the job fairs or whatever are looking for experience. Well, how do you get experience if you haven't already had a job? And how do you get a job without having job experience? That's the problem with education. A lot of times, you don't learn what needs to be learned. If you want to go on your own, you can learn by yourself what you need for that sort of field, but education itself is not doing the job. So, 
either on your own, you can do your own learning, but also in general, you need to fix education as well. Any questions?